Thank you so much for doing this with us. Uh, you mentioned that there must be some efforts uh, to, for the Takaful industry to appeal to non-Muslims. Um, just in a nutshell, why should a non-Muslim choose Takaful products over conventional products? Well, I mean, firstly, why, why shouldn't they? You know, I mean, I, th I think Takaful can offer services and protection which, which are equally valid and beneficial to them. Uh, and those might be some of the inherent product benefits, mm -hmm. it may be some of the service levels, it may also be because of some of the aspects of Takaful which are more fundamental. For example, the concepts of uh, ethical investing, the opportunity to share in surplus and have uh, that contribution returned to you. So these, these are many reasons why a non-Muslim should uh, purchase a Takaful plan. And we have to remember that the product is based on Islam, it isn't a product for Muslims. So, so I think that was a fundamental point that I was trying to, to make, that, uh, that they are based on a particular set of principles, but they're not exclusive. Yeah. Um, how can Takaful products and services benefit a multi-faith community? No, I, I mean, it's a similar, similar based idea that uh, if we can offer prote protection services across the community, then I think wealth protection is a necessary part of that community. And that any society which is uh, developing economically needs to have wealth protection. You know, wealth creation, accumulation, divestment and protection are all the components of a good uh, uh, wealth-based approach for an individual. So wealth protection is vitally important because of the impact it can have on an individual. And again, that's regardless of, of religion. You know, we can understand that if the breadwinner of a family passes away, mm -hmm. that family needs to be able to continue its existence. Yeah. Um, my next question, do you think that the Takaful players are doing enough using technology and social media in promoting the right solutions? Social media perhaps, yes. Technology, no. And I think this is one of the uh, points that we do need to embrace technology. Technology is advancing very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need to be able to use its uh, capabilities much more robustly. Mm -hmm. And in my own organization, Potential BSM, we've, we've really embraced this over the last couple of years and developing uh, tablet-based solutions for both our customers and our distribution to make uh, accessing our products and services so much easier when people who are Gen Y or younger are, are wanting to develop and use these technologies because uh, that's the way they feel more comfortable. And we have to we have to go with them, with that flow. Yeah. Now you mentioned that human capital is a real constraint because of so many complex areas. How do we go about countering this issue? Well, I think we need to show that we can develop a good career path in the tactical industry, and it really doesn't matter which um, uh, sector of the company you might want to see uh, to, to work in, but providing the opportunity for career growth development of an individual, developing their skills, developing their leadership capabilities. These are things that youngsters, 20 plus, coming out of university, maybe early 30s as well, you know, mid-range professionals, they, they're looking to see, well, what will I get out of it as well? You know, there's the ethical call in what they can do to contribute to the industry and the perspectives of Islamic finance, but at the same time, these individuals want something in return. So if we can, we can really work hard to develop and provide career paths, I think these will attract the best and the brightest. Thank you very much. Thank you Have a nice day. Yes.